This is part seven of the flaming spirit of Belden Hall. Was it possible that crafty old Park Belden, with the purpose of testing the validity of the ancient curse at the present time, had consigned me to this room? Had he not insisted that, whatever transpired, I must have a fire on the hearth? I remembered now the particular emphasis he had placed upon the fire, even in the very moment before he had collapsed and revealed to me, all unintentionally, the hideous mark upon his cheek. Should not the sight of that mark have been a warning to me that by following Belden's instructions, I was dallying with something sinister, hideous, mysterious? But as I glanced about the great south room, the aspect of the place was peace personified. The fire blazed merrily, casting rosy shadows. Tango drowsed on his perch betraying not the slightest trace of terror. Gradually the compelling call of sleep came over me. I lay in bed watching the flames. Strange that they did not die down as the wood burned. They seemed brighter, wilder, every moment. When fire is kindled in Belden Hall, in a sudden fit of terror I looked about for Tango. He was not to be found. Had the little creature fled, again warned by a reversal of nature? I got up and rushed wildly to the door. I strained at the bolts, but the rust on them hindered their operation. I could not open the door. For a few dreadful moments I paced up and down the chamber. Then normality came to me again in drowsy stupor. I sat down on the edge of the bed to wait for dawn, but soon I had rolled in between the blankets and was asleep. At what unearthly hour I do not know, I was awakened by a sigh. It was a hollow, sepulchral sigh that followed me through my dream and resolved itself into a groan upon waking. I sat bolt upright in the bed, put my feet to the floor, ready to flee. The fire still blazed upon the hearth opposite, but what was that which crouched before the flames? In heaven's name, what? It was a bent, cloaked figure, its back toward me, from which the groans issued. Even as my heart fairly ceased to beat, I recognized the cloak, the long dark cape which the caretaker habitually wore. How absurd to have been frightened or even surprised at the midnight appearance of Mark with a bundle of wood for my fire. He turned and half looked at me. It was Mark, no doubt of that. Why Mark Bell? I exclaimed. What's the matter? Help! Help! came the hollow cry. Help me up, I've strained my back. The wood is heavy, help me up. Quick, help! Of course, Mark, I said in ready sympathy, leaping from the bed and running to him. Then I remembered suddenly that I had never unlocked the door. To be continue in part eight of the flaming spirit of Belden Hall. Hey there, remember to subscribe to XOXO Gossip Lips for more future videos, pack with entertainments, knowledge and funds. Give this video a thumb up and please share it with your friends and families too. Our catchy background tunes was originally composed by Pierre de Matique. Please consider to subscribe to his channel as well. Thank you for watching. Cheers.